Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Let's first catch up with some of the diaries from this week. And now Guy took a look at unsolicited DNS queries. Most of them appear to be related to still amplified DNS reflection attack. Census.gov still ranks up there quite well. Of course, version.bind, just some basic reconnaissance. Uh, interestingly, how common actually this still is, even though I don't think they're is any sort of recent exploit against a bind that then could be used as a follow-on. Now, there were also a couple of researchers that are looking for open resolvers, like, for example, Shadow Server's DNS scan. In my opinion, there are two lessons to take away from here. First of all, make sure version.bind is disabled. If you are running bind, it's pretty straightforward to do that. And part of most of the secure uh, configuration templates for bind. And secondly, yes, people are still able to spoof DNS queries. So good egress, ingress filtering. But if you're listening to this, you're probably not part of the problem. And then DDA wrote a quick note about changing bad files on the fly. And what this is really about is some unexpected behavior of these bad files. If you think about it, and that's sort of how I thought it worked before I read DDA's diary was that if you run a bad file, it reads the file and then executes it. But apparently that's not really how it works. Bad files are read the uh, one part at a time, and you're able to still alter future parts of the file on disk while the file is being executed. Couple caveats here, you have to make sure that you don't affect anything that already executed, first of all, and then you must not change the file size. So as long as you stick within those uh, boundary conditions, you should be able to change a bad file as it's being executed, which of course now could lead to interesting obfuscation techniques. And in hindsight, it makes sort of sense that this is how bad files are uh, being operated because, well, after all, you don't really want to waste a lot of memory. You're, so you just read the memory, the part of the file that's currently being executed. Well, and typo squatting in various uh, repositories has always been a problem. And Ax Sharma from Bleeping Computer has an interesting example about an NPM package that's just called dash just uh, one character the dash character is the name of the package and apparently it has been downloaded over 700,000 times and wasn't really clear why and access i think a real good guess why it is so often downloaded and that's well if on the npm command line you add a space by mistake, basically simple typo after typing a dash for a command line argument, then you may actually end up including the dash uh, repository. At this point, the repository is harmless. It really just has dead code. It doesn't do anything, but really illustrates uh, the dangers of uh, some of these technologies nobody really knows who is in charge of uh, this repository. So whoever operates it, whoever is in charge of it, could immediately infect uh, thousands of possible projects by just adding some malicious uh, code to this particular uh, module. And looking for an alternate way to block uh, the petit bottom attack uh, that uh, we had uh, last week. Uh, well, uh, there is actually an interesting uh, technique that uh, Greg Kirby uh, came up with. He posted it on Twitter and it relies on NetShell. NetShell is, well, your go-to tool for all things network in Windows. And it has some really fine-grained firewall policies that you can set up, including for specific RPC calls. And that's what uh, Greg proposes here. Haven't had a chance to test it myself, but the feedback I've seen so far is that it works uh, pretty well. So use at your own risk. And uh, again, 
disabling or getting rid of NTLM is probably what you really want to do. But uh, this sounds like an interesting uh, low impact workaround for this particular problem. And these natural filters are probably a good thing to learn about uh, anyway. So uh, take a look at uh, Craig's tweets. And if there is an old school system to move data, move files, uh, move materials across an organization, then one thing that you may run into is pneumatic tubes. Uh, now, apparently, they are also heavily used in hospitals. And while they look fairly old fashioned, uh, apparently, well, uh, they are now cloud controlled. At Black Hat, uh, two researchers, Ben Sari and Barak Haddad, uh, are going to disclose a number of different vulnerabilities in these uh, type of systems. In particular, if you're working for a hospital, if you're running a pneumatic tube system that is cloud controlled, probably want to pay attention when the details are released. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.